A very much mesmerizing morning to one and all present today. I, Tisha Darchi. And I, Smith Mehta. On behalf of the entire squad of the ADIT student branch IEEE, I wish you all a convivial welcome. We are going to have an enjoyable time together. It's our pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Your presence makes us very happy. All of us have been part of a prolonged annual with the onset of the online academic session triggered by the pandemic. And all we ask for in dire times like this is a moment of respite from this bleak tedium in nature's own lap. But hey, don't you get upset. We, the team of Inspiro 4.0, are here to make sure that you will not end up getting bored and shutting down your devices. Good morning and welcome to the first session of the Inspiro 4.0. We are now starting the beautiful journey for our flagship event. And we assure you, you will have a memorable time with us. So without boring you all any further, I'll talk with Smith regarding a recent experience of mine. Hey Smith, uh, I was watching Shark Tank yesterday and got all motivated to start a new venture based on an interesting idea I have got. Huh. Hey, wow, you shall surely pitch your idea on a huge, pl huge platform. Who knows what you can accomplish? Obviously, I know that it's not of your caliber. Stop pulling my leg anyways. Young, inspiring entrepreneurs are trying hard to accomplish their dreams in this era of entrepreneurs. <clears throat> One of the prominent skill sets for going ahead of the game is to build an ecosystem of change makers. This is where our next speaker has expertise in. Let me introduce you to Mr. Ashish Bhartu, co-founder and CEO of Mesh Project Foundation, Change Looms and British Council Global Change Maker. He is a youth activist and a social entrepreneur based, of, based out of New Delhi, India. He is a change maker by Ashoka Foundation. He has been British Council Global Change Maker London, official Indian delegate to BRICS Youth Summit, Guwahati, UNESCO Youth Forum, Paris, International Youth Forum, Saligar, Russia. Recently, he was conferred as a Goalkeeper Global Goals Award by Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. He has widely spoken in the areas of youth leadership and social entrepreneurship. I hand over this platform to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Tisha, and thank you, Smith. Uh, again, uh, good to good to uh, be a part of this program, and uh, very excited to share uh, some of my learnings with all of you. So today, I'm going to be talking about uh, you know art of networking and the, how you know we all can build our networks, which will help us build uh different entrepreneurial ventures different even if you're looking for jobs which helps you build your careers right and these are some of the things i like i mentioned in the inaugural speech also in the morning a very important aspects but as students especially in undergrad programs we may or may not realize the value of it it's only towards the later uh you know part of our professional journeys we see so much value right so i will do share some of these uh, uh tips and tricks with you as part of my today's uh uh, brief. I have a few slides which I have put together that I can share with you. Uh, let me see if I could get my screen up. Uh, I request the organizers to put the screen up also. Yes, wonderful. Great. So I'll probably switch off my video. Um, is there a way you can take, but then you won't be able to hear, able to hear my sound, right? Because um, Hold on, I want to check, make sure this, this is working fine. Hold on, one second, please. Ah, okay, you see the screen, wonderful. Um, and now, do you see the full screen? Perfect, you see the full screen, awesome, great. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about hold on this is not the first slide the first slide is this okay great uh, i hope all of you could hear me loud and clear uh, you can put it in the chat box here um, if you have any questions i'll come back to take questions so i'll keep this presentation short about 15 20 minutes 
and then maybe another 10 15 minutes we can take questions right okay great so jab aap ye gra- uh, ye graphic dekhte ho apne samne when you look at this whole creative which is in front of you what kind of ideas do you get in your mind aapko isko dekh ke kya lagta hai what is the first one or two things that you think in your head put it in the chat i could read it here um anything that comes to your mind dots okay very good what else any more people this is not a zoom platform so i don't really know how many of you are actually there and listening oh okay uh good okay okay great um i could see some comments also on the other side lines all right smith thanks okay so basically it's a it's a it's a it's a web right it's a, a a kind of a community that's being interlinked these are dots which are connected in some or other form some of them are directly connected some of them are indirectly indirectly connected and uh, hence forth right that's how our societies are that's how each one of us are even in your classroom you may be a good friends with some people some people are not so close friends some people are in other classrooms you know them that they exist but you never interacted with them much right so this is like the web that exists out there where different nodes extends into different different um and that's how our community or the world is connected right so what i'm going to talk about uh today is all about how these dots uh play a very significant role in our professional journeys and the yellow dot somewhere in the center it's called the hub also right so there are a couple of these hubs that you will see in your communities who are very strong and they are very well connected they pass on the information very strongly right okay let's go for the right so these are called strong ties okay some people with whom you share close relationship even in school even in college now when some of you start working in the next few years or already working maybe through your internship you will see that there are certain strong ties these are durable reliable and trustworthy relationships that you have cultivated over a period of time the exchange of fine grain high quality information right so basically with through these people you are sharing a lot of important information right they are also informal social control mechanism what that means is that they help you to sort of navigate through like different aspects of um you know what's happening in the society like for example if you have friends who are um you know very good in academics right and you're good friends with them so sometimes teachers or some people they will have more information about the upcoming exam somehow because they are reading more learning more so they become sort of this informal social control mechanism where they passing on information at the same time they are uh helping you navigate some uh important pieces of information right and they are of course alternate to legal contract so you don't have to sign a, some sort of a contract with them that hey you know if you tell me this i will tell you that right these are like a way of social bonding that happens right so it's important to realize that these are the, some people some people are important in your networks and with those people you should invest deeply in cultivating that relationship right going forward then there are certain weak ties the what are these weak ties there are relationships which are characterized by infrequent interaction and low level of intimacy they are um less costly uh, uh they are less you know time money consuming because you're not talking to them that often and you don't have to go out with them for coffee or movies or uh, dinner lunches and so and so forth right and they are quite wide ranging some people of acquaintances some people are like friends of friends and so uh, uh, so different but they also helps you provide some extended opportunities that what that means is like there are certain pieces of information that may come to you from a wide sources of things so they may not be as frequent like somewhere some would say oh you know there is this interesting competition happening we should join right but if it's a close friend they should hey this in uh, competition is important and with something which is very of high interest to you then you should attend that right so those are like basically those close opportunity set versus an extended opportunity set right so you will be able to see like what kind of people around you matters in the uh, entire uh, landscape of uh, 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 networks right okay um 
so uh, this is a very interesting thing okay you may see that when you started college when you came to you know a new place you met new people you tend to be around very similar people which says unke like minded when i was sharing my experience of going to a, a local ngo to volunteer i started liking because a lot of young people i were meeting there they were very like minded right so we kind of like you know connected we felt like there is some sort of synergies right so uh it's very natural that we are feel like we are should be surrounded by people who are very similar nature there is always an advantage in associating with people of varying background because hota kya hai ki when we are only limited to our own kind of people we sometime miss out learning and associating with people who are different than us right and they also bring a lot of value in this entire value chain this is definitely an opportunity to profit by bridging a gap between non interacting groups so for example agar aapke do dost hain matlab wo ek dusre ko nahi jante hain but aap jante ho maybe they are not in your college maybe one of them is your society colony wherever you live that friend and one of them is in a, uh, your college friend right but you see that both of them are great they have great uh, let's say uh, uh, they are machine learning they both of them have great knowledge or interest in machine learning or ai right but if you introduce them you call them over your house for a coffee and say hey both of you should definitely connect right and kal ko ja ke unko connect karne ke wajah se ek dusre se bahut benefit hota hai they learn they share maybe they both start a new venture together right they will always value that you brought them together right so there is a bridging of structural hole ki there are people who are in the ecosystem if you bring them together there's a value that you sort of build together right then we also you know with the these slides when i put together this was more from an entrepreneurship training but this is very relevant for college under undergrad students when you are looking to uh, access more internship opportunities job opportunities more learning opportunities so i put this that um you know there is access to entrepreneur there's access to also learning opportunities which i gave you just an example right now right you may what if these two people you bring together um has so much of value that tomorrow they you need their help support uh they will be able to give you a, a lot of uh, access to information in that particular industry right so maybe you want looking for an internship there that would happen there uh you are definitely able to get more things done um because you have such a strong network um and then there is of course a uh, possibility of benefiting like i said profit is definitely again this was made from our entrepreneurship lens but then if you're looking like i gave you an example you might be looking for a internship so then you know this could be of help right then people also play a role of being a gatekeeper or broker which means is like certain pieces of information shouldn't be passed and all of that we won't get into that right now we'll keep it to very uh, basic right okay um very interesting this is an old statistics this number has kind of reduced so there is something called six degrees of separation so there is a there is a uh uh, uh there is a uh, belief that uh, uh there is a stats basically that exists which says that any human is at max um uh you know kind of uh, away from the other person only by 6 degrees of separation right for example if i want to reach to the president of the us there are only 6 people i have to identify who can help me reach maybe a friend of mine who is in the us knows another friend of hers who works with the white house then there's within the white house maybe some people who really works close to the professor by uh, sorry president biden and you know so like char ya panch degrees ke andar i got to reach the pro, uh, president biden right this is just an hypothetical example but of course what we mean to say is that the connections in the world that anybody you want to reach and why i'm emphasizing on this is because a lot of you would be like looking for internships jobs or if you're starting your own entrepreneurial ventures it's important to connect with the right people at the right time and who are who are relevant for you right so you need to figure out how that connections can be made and how you can access that information and how can you access those people right so this was a basic stats and facebook how you know kind of had reduced but now with linkedin and more and more connections happening that number is kind of coming down right this is one of the most amazing things that you should know when you're looking to build network or you when you go to events when you go to conferences to meet new people okay 
So it says a very simple one rule. It takes only a moment's conscious decision to become the networker with no interference in the one daily routine. All it requires is a slight shift in attitude and adapting to one simple trifurcated rule, which says, "So look at this two and a half lines. Very important. Greet each new acquaintance with an openness to learn about that person, a willingness to help, and an offer to stay in touch." Okay. जब भी आप किसी नए इंसान से मिले उनको आप एक ओपन नेस से मिले कि भाई मुझे इसके बारे में जानना है ये क्या करते हैं क्या इन्होंने किया क्या चाहते हैं एंड अ विलिंगनेस टू हेल्प कैन आई ऑफर हिम और हर समथिंग कैन आई ऑफर देम समथिंग मैं किसी तरीके से उनका हेल्प कर सकता हूँ एंड यू वांट टू कीप इन टच समटाइम्स वी गो टू दीज इवेंट्स कॉन्फ्रेंसेस प्रोग्राम्स वेर यू मीट अ लॉर्ड ऑफ न्यू पीपल इवन लेट से आज इंस्पायर वर्चुअल हो रहा है बट अगर फिजिकल इवेंट होता You would have met a lot of new people, these guests, people, experts, chief guests who are coming to the program. So you want to know about them. You go take five minutes out and connect with them and say maybe they may or may not have a lot of time, but you say I'm very inspired by your journey, sir or ma'am or whosoever, and say can I you know I'm very keen to learn more because I want to learn and then I want to also contribute in the work that you're doing, and uh, can I keep in touch with you? Right, as simple as that. It's beautiful, right? As simple as that. That's all you have to do in this part of the networking. So we'll keep coming back to this. So just remember that you have to be open. You have to be willing to help and be offered uh, offered to stay in touch. Okay. Now, why should we network? Definitely, there are three big reasons for that. One is operational people who can help you get your work done. Offer internal current focus. Like I said, you know, if you go. I'll keep coming back to internships and job opportunities because I know that being an undergrad, these are some of the big priorities for most of you. Even for entrepreneurial people, you know, who are looking for starting their own initiatives, it's important to see, uh, uh, relate with this, right? Then second is personal. Not everybody you are meeting may or may be like immediately professional value. Some people would also be become good friends who will guide you, mentor you, who will tell you, yeah, what you are doing right, wrong. But again, it's helping professionally. But you like to have conversations with them, which goes beyond work. You know, you would like to catch up. Oh, what are your hobbies? What are your interests? Um, what do you do in your personal uh, uh, routine? You know, that also helps you learn a lot, right? third is of course strategic which maybe means like it helps you give you future direction you know they become mentors they become your guy they become your sort of these advisors it could be your alumni from your college who are doing really well right now yeah okay one of the things about there are a couple of myths about networking uh, we'll quickly go over them some people say i'm an introvert shy anti social so i can't network it's absolutely not you know in fact if you look at these stats where introverts and extroverts what's a big difference is you know introverts would like to think and then speak they prefer smaller groups comfortable being you know, with themselves or a smaller group of people they know a few people take risk very carefully solitude is a catalyst for their creativity focus on one thing at a time whereas on the extroverts people like me who like to speak then think uh, uh sometimes which is not a very good thing um uh, enjoy being in a bigger group they have a lot of friends they get their you know force from other people they dive into new situations with a lot of enthusiasm they thrive on surprises and not and not knowing what is happening and they're good at multitasking also you know so these are the main difference but if you are an introvert don't worry about it you know it's not about you have to sell yourself it's all about helping people so you can always go up to another person and say i'm willing to help i'm keen to know you about you if not you know don't worry sometime you can just start by asking few easy questions right uh it's not about becoming popular it's not about becoming you know that you have to become somebody everybody knows it's all about learning and sharing right if it's hard to talk to you make it easy for them to talk to you for example can you go to them and um just strike a simple conversation or probably have a name card which puts a very interesting question on your name tag and say and let people come and make a conversation to you right but be open to listening and talking to new people right Okay, then ask good questions. Be more interested in them than yourself. Look for ways to help them. Follow up with meeting ideas, offers to help, recommendations, and make it easy for others to find you, like be it LinkedIn, Facebook, other online tools, right? Okay, all networking same. All contacts are the same. This is a myth. Okay, not all networking on all contacts are the same. Okay, network contain a small group of people that are proportionally more influence over a network than others. so 5 to 10% of individuals are called critical connectors 
by uh, Karen Stephenson, who is an anthropologist. And he said that, um, uh, you know, these people uh, have a very specific role to play. Like I said, they are hub connectors, critical connectors who know a lot of people in their, um, you know, communities as well, right? So you have to find that in your college, in your alumni networks, in your extended uh, communities, mein, are there people who are well connected with a lot of other people? So make connections with them, offer value to them because they open their entire network for you, right? If you are looking for a job, if you're looking for an in internship, who are these people who can help you, who knows a lot of companies, who know a lot of employers, and then they can help you facilitate that connection, right? Okay, uh, so when you go to events, you know, sometimes it's hard to like really introduce yourself, hard to like make yourself heard and seen. So there is a simple 30 second introduction pitch that you could use. So I'll quickly tell you what that is. So just talk about who are you? What do you do? Why are you here? And what should the person you're speaking to? Why should the person you're speaking to care about them? It's all about them and not about you always remember. So for example, I am Ashish. I run a social enterprise which works on young people who help them. We help, we help them uh, to start their own social impact ventures and for, help them in their entire journey. I'm here because I'm keen to meet more young people, interact with them, get their ideas and support them in a way I could be, right? Um, so if I'm, let's say I'm meeting a person from your college, like a faculty, let's say your uh, principal, sir, right? Um, so I will tell him that, hey, you know, my organization, MASH, would like to do a partnership with your uh, organization where we can create a program to train your students to start their own social enterprise, right? So now he would be interested. Okay, that's interesting. And what would the benefit of that to be my students? Would they help them become better careers? Would they get, get new skills? Will they help them to access more opportunities? Absolutely, right? So now your principal is listening and talking to me. If I say, I'm going to tell my own you know, I achieved this, I did this, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not telling him why is he interested in this? Why he should be listening to me? Why would he... Uh, what, what's in for his, him and your, you know, basically the institute. So then I will lose that introduce, you know. So there is this whole concept of elevator pitch. It's very popular in the startup world that if you have to pitch your idea in 30 seconds, it's like if you, sorry, if you meet a potential investor in an elevator, in a lift going up, you all you have is 30 seconds. How would you pitch your idea, right? In this case, you're pitching yourself. But you have to learn that it's not about yourself. It's about the other person that why is he or she listening or uh, them interested in you, right? So keep these quick four or five bullet points ready whenever you are doing networking and you have to introduce yourself that who am I? What do I do? Why I'm here? And why should you be interested in, you know, speaking to me or learning more about me, right? As simple as that, right? And happy to take questions after this. I'll quickly run over the slides and then we can have a questions if you have in the next few minutes, right? Okay, another very important thing. You may or may not realize this, uh, especially at undergrad level, but uh, if you are, you know, more actively involved in networking, in going to events, conferences, and programs, you are expected to keep these business cards with you. Uh, so have at least about a few 10, 15 business cards, which just says your name, your email, phone, LinkedIn, maybe, you know, um, an offer because you're meeting a lot of people. Aajkal to virtual hai, to honi ra, aur virtual may be, by the way, networking events, hote hai. you can always share your e-card or something like that. Uh, but uh, very interestingly, what you could do is, um, you know, get your... Um, cards made if you're going to big events conferences in the future especially when if you're looking for internship people really appreciate what if you meet like a, some head of hr or a chief technical officer of a large company and then you want to like apply a job or internship there and you have a business card right like people forget right and they logo milte event maybe my i was speaking at an event in delhi and there are like hundreds odd people but i may not remember all of them right neither they may right <laughs> But if somebody's left a business card, drop me a line and we will talk about how to also write very simple emails um, after this line. Um, so then people tend to remember you, right? 
So there are some business cards etiquettes here that uh, keep them in a case and not fold. Otherwise, it looks very shabby. Um, um, you know, don't put it in a back pocket. Uh, every professional, even if you're currently unemployed or student, should have a business card. Uh, should include your name, contact information. Like I said, if you can make a website for yourself where you want to put your work, it might show up your CV there. Awesome. You know, people love it. I have a lot of people applying to work at, at MASH in all different kind of roles, right? We do have in virtual internships. We do have full-time roles. We do have uh, freelance roles as well. So um, yeah, if people send you their website and I like it, like it catches the tension, chance is very high, high that we're going to end up bring, bringing that person on board, right? Okay, when you give your business card from someone, politely say thank you, look at few seconds before putting away. Yes, if you give a business card, you can keep it in the gym, you can attend it, so that's not very uh, good. You should always also, I'll show you, like when you hold a business card, hold it with both your hands and offer it in a way where the other person can read your information, not that the information is towards your side, which is like you are reading it, it's the other way around, right? So you offer it from the, like for, for you, it's the uh, like uh, upside down, right? So the other person can read the information, right? Um, yeah, of course, and say thanks and look at for a few seconds. If something catches your attention about them, maybe the company name, address, whatever, speak about for a minute. Like I meet people who have their head offices, let's say um, in Singapore, you know, we do have a branch in Singapore, we do uh, some work. So I would always be curious to know where their office is, what they're doing and all of that. So people are like, oh, wow, you know, there is some sort of connect that you've built with that person, right? Uh, and same thing when I'm Singapore and somebody has some India connection, there's so much to talk about it, right? Uh, okay, great. So I'm, I'll quickly go ahead. Um, you can take the notes on the back of the business. So it's example, you met somebody, somebody said, oh, you met a head of HR and they said, huh, hamari a internship opportunity hai. But uh, we have a junior associate role for systems engineering. I'm randomly, I'm making things up right now. So don't take it, take me by word. So you should take it note that so-and-so person met me and he or she said that you have this open role. And that person said, I'll connect you with my uh, uh, HR manager for this, you know, or HR associate for this. Who's this HR person? Take that note of that person and take it up. Right. So keep that notes when you're meeting a lot of people at such kind of events. Right. Okay, going further uh, to our, you know, friends, uh, I was talking about, um, especially the introverts, right? Sometimes it's difficult to, you know, where do you start that conversation? How do you walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, and then what you should, should talk about, right? So these are some quick tips in terms of what could be good conversation starters, right? Um, especially in the professional space, you know, you should always be interested to learn about them, right? So let's say, so Ashish, what exactly do you do at MASH? Help me understand this. Then politely, you know, put this and then carefully listen to me. You know, if somebody is working, open. so I'll tell, hey, this is what we do at MASH. We build programs for young people, look at community building, capacity development and amplification. And within that, tuck, 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 these are examples of your programs, right? So if you heard me very well, right, and you captured that information, as a speaker, I am also with you. I'm not distracted. But if somebody starts using their phone, somebody is distracted, somebody cuts me in between and just starts speaking, I think that's that's not a very good um, uh, communication etiquette, right? So these are some conversations started, but they're also followed by proper listening and proper com communications uh, uh, behavior, right? Um, okay, you can ask them what, well, please tell me more about you. I really got interested in, you know, let's say by just looking at your company name or, um, sometimes it's awkward to say that, uh, please tell me about you. You know, it's would be very awkward to put like that, but, uh, at professional events, people don't mind because there is a reason that you're there. For example, if you're at a conference for again, um, um, you know, AI and ML, right. So that means that you're already interested. That's why you're there. But within AIML, what do you do? There's such a wide space, right? So that's why this is important. Okay, what got you involved in this organization or event? I really like, let's say, your uh, uh, you know uh, designation. You are said like chief evangelist. What does that mean on your card, right? So a lot of people have these name cards on or 
कॉन्फ्रेंस में जाओ तो वो लैंड यार्ड होते हैं ना उस पर टैक्स होते हैं तो पीपल राइट आई एम सो एंड सो एंड दिस इज वॉट आई डू सो यू कैन ऑलवेज ट्राई कॉन्वर्सेशन और समथिंग दैट यू फाउंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग राइट एक्सट्रोवर्ड्स के लिए थोड़ा ईजी हो जाता है वो कहीं से भी कुछ भी पिकअप कर लेते हैं पीपल लाइक मी एट जस्ट से ही वेरी यू आर कैरिंग अ वेरी कोल यू नो आप up 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 like anything you know a very cool like a, a laptop sleeve you know i like the design and then from there you start conversation and then that realize that person is head of let's say chief design officer of a large company and then you probably have some potential uh business opportunities come up right so like that right okay maybe we'll chat in a line for maybe we we'll chat if we are in a line for kabhi koi when you're going to these events you're standing for tea coffee break you know like um um so then you are spending 10 minutes in that line for your meal or snacks or beverage so then is this a good time to sort of just um you know make a conversation with someone right okay how did you get involved in this line of work and what have you enjoyed most of your experience what can you tell me about yourself what is the greatest opportunity or biggest challenge what do you do when you're not attending events you know what do you do in your life what do, that's also a good question to know some people like you know um um when they are in, in the in the, the kind of business they are right okay so these are some of such conversation there are plenty of more you can always google up uh, uh more conversation start to die quickly move in the interest of time okay these are some of the again few bunch of um questions you can are very powerful what challenge you been facing in your industries people would like to speak about that because then you can say hey i have an idea or solution for this right is there anything you need you're especially looking for if i happen to know you're offering to help here right uh what do you do when you're not working again we covered this but it's a good way to sort of build up one on one personal connect with people um um what made you decide being in this service and line if people have switch careers so like lot of these interesting conversations are fun right what would make a person company ideal for a client or customer for you which is very good like you know if you're looking to pitch business tomorrow you can always say what kind of bhai aap log an ideal client matlab what kind of people you like to work with what kind of services you're looking what gap that can be solved for you secondly if you're looking for a job what is an ideal candidate if you're looking for an internship what kind of you know interns that you're looking for you know so then you know what are the samne wale ki expectations kya and then you can very well align with that right what separates your business from a competition what significant changes have you seen take place in your professional area of experience through the years right so these are some very very interesting things to sort of look at we have a, um which are great conversation starters as well right now i'll come to talking about follow ups okay there's also a slide here on email etiquette um which i will come back email or social media etiquette but once you met a person in event and you, it's easy to meet 10 20 people at a good event agar pure din ka conference hai aaram se aap 10 se 15 log max matlab it's an average if you are very good 15 20 people you can meet okay so how do you keep a track you know you should put a proper excel database who's this person where you met the person what you both spoke about where he or she works what he she is interested how you might be able to benefit each other how he or she may be able to help to you who she connected you with um, and when you follow up right so that's a good way for you to remember agar aap ek event mein 20 logo se mile ho so you lose track and agar aap mahine mein do ya teen event mein gaye to 50 60 people it's very difficult to keep track who's interested in what and what was the context of the conversation right again a lot of this may not be very relevant at this point i know most of you in college you're very busy with your college work but these may help you as you go build your uh, career forward right um coming back now it's all about adding value so how often do you forward articles or services found so aap dekhoge agar linkedin pe aap most of you are there um lot of people are sharing knowledge right so then people like to create or see value that this person has shared about something of which was very valuable in this network right how often do you post link to your facebook page allowing your friends to benefit how do you post discussions in your linkedin group kabhi kabhi aap apne na college ke bhi group mein bhi dekhoge kuch log always they are sharing something of value I'm not talking about random forward messages. I'm talking about something of which is value, right, to everybody. So you feel like this person is like has like leadership qualities, has cares for the community, and so and so forth, right? Okay. Um, this is a simple message. If you are connecting with someone on LinkedIn or any other social media platform, I get a quite a few messages. Some of the people are very like long message. <laughs> It's hard to read through and then find the very very. 
but what do you want you know that's like somewhere two lines in between right uh but uh, if you keep it short like hey i am ashish i came across your profile on linkedin um uh, and i see your work seems very interesting to me i um i am also interested in the social entrepreneurship space and i have an idea to let's say work something on climate change would it be great would would it be great if we could connect over a call sometimes where i can share my ideas with you right as simple as that or you're looking is a quick 20 minute 30 minute call right so i'll say hey happy to connect you know let's speak uh next weekend this time saturday 5 pm 5 to 5 30 does it work for you uh personally i'm telling you people who keep it crisp short to the point i tend to respond to them far more uh, uh frequently than some people who written long messages it's hard to navigate because see except that everybody's busy right and this may or may not be their top priority right so you, how can you get their attention in a short span of time right and make your ask very clear right um it's like an elevator pitch sort of like concise in a couple of words that are put there right all right so um these are few quick hacks um again uh, i didn't go i think email part is not mentioned here but all i mention is something similar if you're writing an email to somebody you can expand a little bit about your idea a little bit about yourself the person has more information but don't put too much also for a person to read right unless and until there is a very clear proposition to make and i met you at an event I, and you proposed an idea and i say hey i would love to read whatever you have done so far it will help me then send me all that information uh download right same thing you can do for emails right okay uh we are about to finish uh, it's about 11 15 16 so we can take questions also for 5 10 minutes and wrap it up by 11 30 have a few calls to do after that uh these are few quick hacks um so again these are global sort of like statistics being put uh it may or may vary from you know culture to culture some people tend like when i was in singapore i would get some emails like 5 to 6 a.m people do like there are people who would like just want to get their inbox cleared early in the day so then they have a more sort of a clear schedule for the rest of the day and take on things right so quick hacks emails which are sent in the morning between 6 and 7 are bound to be opened more likely uh, than they are sent in the evening the one sent on sunday afternoon has an opening rate as high as about 45 4% while it goes uh under 35 if it's sent during a work week okay people are relaxed sometimes afternoon sunday chilling uh notification comes up on their phone they may end up opening it versus they are busy in a work day and then they tend to open your emails right uh monday morning 10 to 11 am emails tend to be also read far more twitter's kind of high between 10 am um and 7 pm uh it turns out fewer people on twitter during middle of the night uh of course for obvious reasons uh people don't want to like just just chat but they want to just relax and sleep uh linkedin of course tuesday thursday 7 am to 9 pm and evening 5 to 6 pm because mondays are very busy fridays people want to relax so between tuesday wednesday and thursdays mornings while commuting to the work or coming back it's good to sort of connect right again the facts would vary like i said you can always see what works in the most of the cases okay All right, one of my favorite quotes uh, from Keith Ferrazzi. He said that currency of real network is not greed, but generosity. Which I said earlier, also reinstating that always be open to know about others, offer them some sort of help, and keep in touch with them. Don't be pushy. You know, you don't want to annoy anyone. And if they don't get back to you, so don't be pushy. If maybe you can try in the next few days but they might be busy they might be going through something uh personal uh, there could be different reasons that they might not be responding to you right now there are about 7.5 more than 7.5 billion people on planet so <laughs> you know if you can't get through somebody don't worry you may find someone else who could be of more value and help right awesome this is all from my side for today happy to take some questions from all of you yeah um let me come back on the screen yes there you go thank you so much sir it was a great session thank you for all the beautiful thoughts and guidance it was so nice of you to come on the very short notice 
I know you have a busy schedule, but it would be great if you could answer some of the questions asked by viewers. Uh, yes. So the first question is from uh, Mahe Goswami. What are some tips for introverts to network efficiently? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a good question, Mahek. Uh, one of the things I also uh, talked about in my uh, presentation is that, you know, introverts, of course, they need to do a little more practice. So maybe with a smaller, safer group, you can do. But if I shared some of these conversation starters, you can always use those to just make up a conversation, you know. And uh, don't think that it's you have to push yourself, pitch yourself. It's all about just getting to know them. People like to talk about themselves, right? So just go and ask, hey, I like what you just said, if that was a speaker, right? Or I like what you do. I've heard about your company. Can you tell me more what you do there, right? So just make questions so that people start talking to you. Once they start talking, then they will be also interested about you, right? So I think it's simple. Don't have to stretch yourself, push yourself much, yeah? I hope that was helpful. Yeah, I hope, Mohek, your query is answered. So there's another question from the viewer, uh, Divya Galani. Talking the first, uh, taking the first step among us, the whole team network is always the most difficult, and many people give give up there itself. Sir, please guide us how to overcome this. Okay, let me try to understand this. So taking the first step among the whole team network is always the most. Okay, so basically you're saying like, um, you know, it's like difficult to take the first step forward to come out as a leader or to push yourself uh, be, uh, in a large group of people, right? Uh, especially in school colleges, that's pro pro probably more common because you are in a group of people and then sometimes you have this hesitation, right? Um, I know it's a difficult, it's not easy, Divya, but uh, thinking about yourself that if you are one of those people who takes the first step forward, you bring a change. Like I'm sure a couple of your friends and colleagues have put this event together, which is benefiting everybody. Now, you look up to these leaders in a very different light. And they, these leaders also feel very confident about creating some value to their community members, right? So there's always a trade off and there is no gain without pain or that you have to be a little courageous. Um, so just practice in a small, safer group of people, like maybe in your own close friends, can you take a initiative to let's say organize a uh, outing or going forward that's also a leadership sort of instincts then extend that to the class then extend it to the branch then extend it to the university and so on and so forth right and then you will see that kind of develops over a period of time in whatever shape and uh, uh, sort of role that where you go yeah yeah keep practicing on this you know i hope Divya, your query is solved and also, also one of the small other things is be surrounded with more leaders. I'm sure if there is a group of friends who are already very actively involved, you know, learn from them. You'll pick up from them. Sometimes just interacting, learning closely, watching, observing them will also help. So try to like, you know, spend some time with those people who are already quite um, that way. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is from Rishi. He wants to ask that first impression is the last impression. What are some tips that will be beneficial to create a long lasting impression with your network? Sure, that's a great question, Rishi. So first impression, last impression said, but I also feel like uh, it, it it could be okay that if you may or may not have made a very great impression on someone, uh, but if you are very persistent and that person to whom you've spoken to uh, is important to you, you could always, uh, you know, explain or go back and help them understand. But nevertheless, I know it does make a huge difference uh, on how you uh, create that uh, first impression. So I think two, three things, which I also covered in the slide is uh, listen carefully, always be curious about the other person, listen them carefully, uh, do a good follow up because at these events, conferences, you don't get a lot of time, uh, especially as the people are more senior and busy. So keep your conversations and ask very clear, make, make, ask good questions, ask intelligent questions. Don't make it very random broad ask that you know how can i solve climate change you know what should i tell right <laughs> of course there are ten thousand things you could do but if you say very specifically that hey i want to do something about waste so you've done your homework you're interested and you figure out you want to do something in waste management and then within your complex you want to do something about let's say uh, uh plastic waste management right so now you're asking hey i want to do plastic recycling and uh, uh 
I've figured out various technologies. Um, which one do you think would be better? So that's something which I feel like, hey, the person seems quite, you know, done his homework or humble homework. And um, maybe with my experience, I could help. But if it comes very broad, you know, which again is not bad, but it's just that to whom you're writing with what context you're writing. If I go to Bill Gates and ask like, you know, what should I do to, to change about the world? Bill Gates would be like, just stop wasting my time. But if I ask him something very specific, which he thinks is important, is valuable, and you make it very pointed asks. Uh, and people like him, of course, they are again, very, very, like they are institutions in themselves. They also have very big teams, you know, so they will put me in touch, let's say with the foundation, they will put me in touch with somebody who worked there, climate uh, change division or um, renewable energy division, so and so forth, right? So you'll understand, and you never know how you will connect those dots, which I was also sharing with my um, uh, story about waste management, right? Something leads to another thing also, right? So yeah, I think with first impression, do your homework, um, um, you know, uh, be interested in another person, listen to them. Uh, if they are very big and senior, they may not want to talk to you. It's absolutely fine. But you do your homework and go very clear. Hey, I'm so-and-so person. Um, I'm interested in what you do. Uh, tell me more and how can I keep in touch with you, right? A uh, fair point, right? Like it should, should be of sounding value to them because everyone, each one of us as human beings are always looking for something, you know, some problem to solve. If you ask me, there are 10 things I could tell you, which I would be interested to talk to you guys right now about it. There is a big program project that we are running with colleges in India, we'll be happy to partner with the institute. So if you're somebody, if you reach out, hey, tell us more about MASH, what you, now I'm interested to talk to you. So you build one-on-one -on -one connect with me, right? So yeah, sometimes you can just say, hey, we don't know how we can be of help, but MASH sounds interesting. Um, can you tell us more? And is there a way we could help as a college, as institute, or even as an individual? We might be hiring for interns right now. We might be looking for uh, freelancers, right? Could be anything, right? So that's how, you know, conversations start. That's how you build the uh, strong connections also, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Uh, I'm sure that Rishi has got some great tips. Okay, so the next question goes with how to grab opportunities to network with professionals holding high positions. Yeah, so rhythm again, very, very good question. I think like I just covered in my previous uh, point also, like have very clear ask, do your homework and LinkedIn's a great tool. Um, if you think somebody as big as CEOs and all of them may or may not be very responsive, start small. Who's in second in command to them? Who's third in command to them? Not everything will happen in a single go. I've met, I, I literally met Bill Gates, okay? So but the journey to meeting Bill Gates, knowing Bill Gates is not like I've written an email to Bill Gates, right? It has happened that I've done work, which the kind of work foundation support. Then we were also the awarded by Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation. Then he's uh, invite all the leaders, young leaders in New York for their annual goalkeeper summit during the UN General Assembly time. So it's a process and journey. Sometimes you would also have to see Again, and it's not the only motive that you want to meet somebody. So you were doing this, but your work automatically kind of like takes you there. Right. Uh, but to your question, like I said, you know, email, LinkedIn, there are a lot of these tools like rocket emails, which can help you get the emails of some important people, but very clear. Why would they want to respond to you? What is their interest in reaching out to you? If you're looking for guidance and mentorship, some people absolutely are very keen and they are very kind in spending that kind of time but you also need to know what kind of mentorship and guidance that you're looking from there you, do, you don't want to waste anybody's time right so you should do your homework very well and very clearly and then um, ask for that support from them yeah i hope rhythm got his answer Thank yeah you, the more senior people are more you know prepared you should be in terms of uh, you know approaching them yeah uh, so the next question is from Vanshika Bhanushali. She wants to ask that your take on someone who is introvert but should grow her done network. How should she do? How should she do that? Yeah, Vanshika, I think we covered this, but I'll quickly tell you again once again is uh, first meeting more people, right? And for that, you have to break your shell a bit, make conversation, learn about people. Secondly. <clears throat> um following up being in touch right constantly observing their network 
third i think the digital space allows us to for especially for intro, introverts allow them a great place to talk about things that matters to them so share quality information on your linkedin on your professional networks even on some whatsapp groups if you're part of let's say if it's an aiml whatsapp group so are you adding some quality information there right so i think that's how you kind of grow your network and uh, um and offering value to people i think that's the most important and within that value chain find few hub connectors who are very well plugged in people right so you don't have to spend your time if there are 200 people on the group don't spend time time to know all 200 but can there be like five or 10 or 20 more people who are most important to you for your kind of work you know and be curious about them be connected with them and you know create your value from there on yeah yeah yeah, I hope uh, Vanshika, your query is solved. So there, there's another question from Vanshika. An aspiring yeah. an entrepreneur who wants to start her journey from young age but can't due to other responsibilities and pressures, what should she do? Allah, who could? Um, I think so. Doesn't matter like at what stage you want to become an entrepreneur. It could be later if there are responsibilities which you want to take care at when you're young. So see, one of the other very interesting things which I would like to share with all of you, and this is something I've learned over the years, and a lot of these the leadership coaches also emphasize is that don't, you know, we sometimes underestimate how much we could do in 10 years, and we overestimate what we could do in one year, right? So plan your long-term journey. If you think that you want to become an entrepreneur and you're right now in school, college, and you have responsibilities to take care, for example, you took an education loan, and you want to pay that off so you don't want to take a risk of starting your own enterprise right so don't think about you know jumping into entrepreneurship right now right think about how can you maximize learning work for let's say two three years pay that loan off but while working do the kind of work which will help you gain the skills the network the kind of like you know access to resources which will help you become an entrepreneur so instead of uh becoming entrepreneur today you maybe become three or four years down the line. But what you are doing today is walking that path of entrepreneurial journey, right? So instead of putting pressure on yourself that, hey, I want to do everything in that one or two years right after I graduate versus you do say, you say, hey, I'll do it in five years, but the learnings for it, the resources for it would like to come today. And again, you know, I understand it's not easy. Nothing is easy, right? Um, even even if you want to become a top-notch professional, you know, it doesn't come easy, right? But one step at a time, one step at a time and being consistent about it, you know, I would also like to put these things, you know, put, put I wanted to share this towards the end, but I think it would be, might be more relevant to put this now is like, you know, three very simple formulas for doing anything in life, which is very probably fulfilling is having big dreams, which I talked about earlier as well. Second, starting small you know you don't have to take very big jumps in the beginning you know it's eventual steps growth that you uh, uh should should target for right and then taking steps consistent steps and starting immediately so dream being start small and act now don't postpone this don't say that oh right now i'm young i have a lot of responsibility pressures i'll think about becoming entrepreneur someday so don't postpone that thinking then because you are what you are getting in a cycle is that someday it will happen someday this will happen and it's hard to break that cycle and pattern of you what you should do is i want to become entrepreneur put a five-year timeline to that but for that i'm working today what i'm doing i'm attending this event i'm asking the right questions going back i'm going to put this learnings learn and research more about entrepreneurship can i be part of some communities where such young entrepreneurs are supported. So I'm learning, gaining skills. So next two, three years, I'm only learning, exploring the space. I have responsibilities to take care. So I'm going to do that as well. And the day I'm ready, when I'm, responsibilities are taken care of, I have my you know knowledge, what I want to do. I've also saved up some money. I also probably have access to investors now. So I've played it. So you know, your journey is not started after five years. Your journey started now, right? So have that big dreams take small steps and act now don't don't push it to someday it will happen even if you're thinking about it you're doing something about it that's action in play not the day you register your company and it says hey now you're an entrepreneur you're an entrepreneur the day you 
act like an entrepreneur you think like an entrepreneur you have that lens of looking at things in a very entrepreneurial way which is solving problems to make a difference right um yeah you know i would say that doesn't matter what agent stage you really build something big it's all about taking that steps towards in in that journey yeah Okay, I'm also being a little cognizant of the time because I have a few calls starting now. So if uh, there are some one or two quick questions we could take, otherwise I'll be more than happy to connect with all of you on LinkedIn. You can look me up. There's just one person with this name, and then uh, it's uh, Ashish Birgi. I think you could see my name out, out there, um, or you could take my email uh, from your college. Um, uh, you know, uh, the team who's reached out to me. So happy to take it uh, offline as well. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for all the beautiful answers. It was so nice of you to come on a very short note. Uh, also, we would like to present you with a virtual token of gratitude as an appreciation. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was a great session, and we hope to see you soon in the next in person next time. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining. Thanks, everyone. All the best and great, great joining today with all of you. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Time flies, and now we have come to an end for the morning session of day one, Inspiro 4.0. So. Go grab your lunch, take a good sleep because the next time you will come back, our flight would have gone towards another journey of inspiring stories. Have a good day and let us meet soon.